stopping. Hello, okay, I'm James. I'm making a video to explain this question. This is 7x. This is not too bad. Uh, I'm going to walk you through this and let's see if we can get this done together. Hopefully this will help out other people that potentially need to see this video again. So I don't know if I, I covered it well enough. Uh, and by the way, all these people now know that you need this video, just saying. Uh, all these very enterprising students are here at 12 a.m. studying with me. It's ridiculous. Anyway, let's take a look at this. Um, basically what we're saying is we've got an H spectrum. Okay, so this is our I, our HNMR, uh, and it says we've got a compound of C6H12O. First thing I like to do, I like to figure out what my hydrogen deficiency index is here. And what I see is that, you know, normally with C6, I would expect to get at least 14 hydrogens. Here I have 12. So 14 minus 12, the O doesn't affect this. You get 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1. That means that I've got at least one double bond or one ring in here. I know for a fact that I don't have a ring here because they just wouldn't be that mean to me. Um, so let's take a look at this also. The other thing that supports that I have a double bond is this IR spectrum as a characteristic signal at 1630 centimeters negative one, right? So if the wavelength is about, uh, sorry, the wave number is about 1630, what that means is that I've got, you know, I've got an alkene here, all right? Uh, the no signals at either 1700 to 1730 or the 3300 to 3400 all that tells me here I don't have a carbonyl and here I don't have an alcohol. Um, to really help you, really check out the chart um, that they give you. It, it helps out a lot. Obviously, you don't need to memorize these. I can tell you, though, after a while, uh, which certainly won't be in the next 24 hours to the exam, uh, you will feel pretty comfortable with these numbers. Get it down for the final. Uh, no problem, man. So let's take a look at these absorbances. Uh, what I like to do is I like to do the following. On the sheet uh, that we were given, you can see that roughly between 4.5, this is roughly, this is like an estimate almost, uh, 4.5 to 6.5, this is typically where we have information about alkenes. I'm trying to write while holding this thing with one hand. I'm not too good at this, all right? Uh, and I'm just going to throw that out right now. There's also a good question, I believe, on the 2000... 11 final exam, which all these guys are working on right now and hopefully getting right, um, that will show you that between 9 and 10, more than likely you're going to have an aldehyde. So, let's take a look at this over here. Uh, I like to start from the right and work my way to the left. The reason why, take a look at these numbers here. This pretty much tells me that at, starting at 4.5, roughly, roughly 4.5, I'm going to start seeing alkenes, and after that I might see aldehydes and all that wonderful shit, stuff. Um, as a result, when I start here, I can stay away from a lot of the functional groups. So I like to start from the right, work my way from the left. Sometimes you, you might have a little bit of ambiguity. In that case, just, you know, find the next thing and, and work with the second piece. Break it into components, basically, as Bromio would say. So let's start with this over here. We have a 3H. That's going to be a triplet. All right, that's pretty characteristic of a CH2 bonded to, sorry, a CH3 terminal methyl bonded to a CH2. And as you can see here, here's the CH3. Let me draw that in first. Here's the CH3. All right, and that's bonded to a CH2. Okay, so I've taken care of this one here and probably this one. I know that these two CH2s cannot be bonded to this CH3. The reason why, I need to have at least a quartet to show the three hydrogens on that methyl. This is a triplet, that's a doublet. This is the only one that's at least a quartet, all right? So in that case, I know comfortably that that CH2 is a sextet. That means it must see five hydrogens bordering it, all right? Because five plus one is equal to six, and that's the sextet. So... I can comfortably say then that I've got a CH2 here, okay? Now, from there, I've taken care of, let's see, here's the CH2, here's the CH2. This CH2 must have been this one, because I need to have at least had a triplet to see that CH2 here. As a result, this must be this. Now, that only sees a triplet, which is this CH2 here. Now, going back up here, I know I have an oxygen. I know I don't have um, an alcohol, and I know I don't have a carbonyl. As a result, this must be an ether, all right? Um, so I feel pretty comfortable saying that because this over here is a triplet, and it only sees these two, the 2 plus 1 is equal to 3, I feel pretty comfortable putting my O right here, okay? Following that, so what do I have here? I've got two of my CH2s. This CH2 is done. This CH2 is done. That CH3 is done. This CH2, I feel pretty good keeping it on this side, and now I've got something interesting. Between 4.5 and 6.5, again, I have my alkenes, usually. And what I've got, I've got specifically three hydrogens with these absorbances, 16.8, 10, 6.2, 6 or 2.1. 
These are pretty characteristic of hydrogens that are on a double bond. Where we would see, for example, and these are numbers you need to know, geminal hydrogens would be somewhere around 1 hertz. Okay? Cis vicinal would be around 10 hertz. That's around, roughly. All right? And these trans vicinal would be about 15 hertz. And so what we've basically defined here are transvicinal, cisvicinal, aka three bonds away is vicinal, and the two geminal, which are one hertz away. And looking at this, let's draw this out. We see that this hydrogen here is 10 and 2.1. Well, 10 and 2.1 looks kind of like this geminal and this cisvicinal. As a result, this over here must be that, all right? Likewise, I've got this hydrogen here, which is a 16.8 and a 2.1. 16.8 is roughly 15, 2.1 is roughly 1, all right? So that means that second one must be this over here. This last one, 16.8, 10, and 6.2, well, here we see the 16.8, here we see the 10, but we have this 6.2. Moreover, this over here would be a doublet. Why? Because I have one of this, plus 1 is equal to 2. I have one of this... Uh, and I certainly know that these two are not equivalent, all right? Because you can see here they have very different relationships with one another. This 16.2 must refer to that triplet. Oh, sorry, that 6.2 must refer to the triplet. And that would make sense if I have a CH2 here. Now, here's the thing. How many carbons do I have total? I have six carbons. Well, here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four, here's five, and here's six. This CH2, then, must be equivalent to that CH. Now, I broke this up. I typically don't do this. I, 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 honest to God, after you do this enough times, you can see that CH2 and be like, okay, now I've got this double bond. I feel pretty comfortable then transferring that, this picture right over here. And uh, this should be your answer right here.